In this lesson, we will talk about variables. So open up a UiPath process and your UiPath will look like this. Go to activities and then find a sequence. Drag it in and we will rename it. So either right click on the name or just double click. I will just call this main. Before we talk about variables, let's talk about two output activities because those ones are important. We will search for a right line here in activities, drag it in. A right line is nothing but a, an activity that will take in a text and then it will output it to the output panel down here. So for example, if we type something in, in quotation marks, as always, we can just say, uh, hey, house tricks. Then we can run the robot, so click the drop down, run file. And now we can go down to output and see that our text is nicely printed out here. Usually we will not use this in the robot, but we will use it as a um, some sort of a light debugging, so we can check values while we are developing the robot. And this is important, so learn this. That's actually quite simple, isn't it? Then the second output activity, that is the message box. So drag that in. And we can just uh, type something in here in quotation marks as well. Keep learning. What a message box is, is that it is a box that pops up on the user screens and stop the robot. It will pause the robot uh, until the user clicked OK, and then the robot will continue. Let's see how that looks. So we'll run the file. And now we can see, or at least in some seconds, we can see the message box pops up with the keep learning. The robot is not running until we click OK here. So we can wait. Usually we'll use this for debugging. Say that we want to run a, our robot to a certain point and then we want to have a break so we can check whatever is going on, either in the browser or an application, then we'll put this in. We can click OK and now the ro robot will run. So see these two activities as, as some light debugging tools, that is, that we can um, find errors with them quite easily. We will use them in this variables lesson. So we will use the message box. Let's delete the right line. The first thing that we will talk about is strings. So let's create a string variable. A string variable is nothing but a variable that will hold text of any kind. That could be whatever, uh, letters, numbers, whatever. And this is how it looks. So go to variables. And then we will need to select an activity. So that could be the main here. And then we will create a variable. We will just call this, we could call it maybe welcome. I guess it will be a string. And we can see in this drop down that we can choose Boolean, integer 32, object, data table, array, and we can browse for some other types. There will be loads of variables in here. And don't worry, we will rarely use them. I don't know like 1% of them, or maybe I do, but you will rarely use uh, all of these. So don't worry. We'll use a string here and we will have a welcome message. So instead of hard coding it up here, typing it in, we will type it in as a variable. So we can say welcome to this course like this. And instead of having the text just up here, we can just type in the variable's name. And if you want to have the intelligence auto completion on, press control space and you can see a nice drop down. Then we can see the welcome is here. And we can type and we can see that it suggests something. And if we want to complete this, just press the tab and it will complete. So now we have put in the variable here. And this message box will now display whatever value this variable holds. And that is welcome to this course. Let's see it. So we run the file. And we can see that we got our message up here. So we can also combine strings. Let's say that we want to have a second strings. We can call this uh, name. That'll be a string as well. The scope that is main, that is where it's defined in. And it's here, that's fine. And we can say, uh, I'm on 
others. And then what we'll do up here is that we can have a plus and then we can have our second variable. That was the name, right? So we can type it or we can just press tab and we'll have it here. You'll notice that we'll need a space here, but we'll fix that in a few seconds. Let's just try to run this. So now we combine, combine two variables, two string variables. Welcome to this course, I'm Anders. That's quite neat. Then we could add a space, we could actually either have a space in the last part of this or in the first part of this value, or we could type it in up here. So plus, then we can have quotation marks with a space, quotation marks, and then the plus. So now we have added the space in the hard-coded way. We can run the file. Boom, that's it. That's how easy it is to combine strings. We'll use that a lot later in the course. Now our second important variable that's integers. And an integer is just a whole number. That is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is all the whole numbers and not the decimal numbers. It will also be the negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, even though we are, not, we are rarely using them. Usually we use the integer for calculations or, more important, counting. So let's try to create an integer. So we create an, uh, an integer down here. We will call this integer 1. And instead of string, as per default, we will choose the int32, that's an integer. And we can give it a value. And for integers, we don't need the quotation marks, or we should not put them in. So let's just type in a number, and that's it. So now we can uh, go up here again to welcome to this course, I'm Anders. Then we could um, have another text. We could uh, say, um, I am this ready to teach you UiPath, we could have a colon, and a blank, and now we can have our integer, our number. So we'll say plus, and then we can have our integer 1, like here. However, now you notice that if we try to print this out as a text, we uh, cannot print an integer out. We need some sort of a conversion to a string, because we can only print out strings. So we'll say dot and then to string. This to string we will use a lot. I repeat, we will use this a lot. So remember this. This is important. Now check what this looks like. Welcome to this course. I'm Anders. I am this ready to teach you UiPath 4. Well, 4 on a tenth scale is not a lot, so maybe we should change this. We will create a second integer. So we can call this integer 2. That will also be of the type integer. And let's have it 6. So now we need to add these two. We can go up to the message box. Now this one has become a little bit long. You can see it can be quite hard to look at. So what we can do, we can go up to properties here. And we can click it here into the text. That's the same thing. But here you can see that we can drag it out. And it's a little bit more neat to look at. It is the exact same as editing down here, but you have the possibility up here. Now we want to add these two integers. And to add two integers, we need them to be integers. So we cannot say integer 1 to string plus integer 2 to string. That will not work. We cannot add two strings. But what we can do is that we can have a parenthesis here. Then we can say integer 1. Then we can say plus integer 2 like this, and then a parenthesis, and then we can convert it to a string. Here, we click OK. Then we will run the file. And you can see it here, welcome to this course, I'm Anders, I'm this ready to teach you UiPath 10. Well, that's actually true. And we can stop here. Our last variable we will talk about in depth, that is a Boolean. A boolean is nothing but a true-false variable. It can only hold, hold either of these values. So let's say that we, uh, let me delete this message box, and we will create a boolean. So down here, we can say, welcome check, call it that. The variable type, that will be boolean, this one up here. And now we will introduce an if. 
if you have not stumbled across an if in your experience with computers, don't worry, it's re really simple. And for those of you who know programming, you know uh, all about an if. So we drag in an if here. Our condition, well, that will be if this boolean is either true or false, per default it is false. So if we don't add a value here, it will be false. That could be the condition, welcome, check. So if this one is true, then we will go down here to the then, or if this is false, we'll go to the else. So let's say that is true, then we want to send the user a welcome message. That will be a message box. So search for a message box in the activities and drag it in. We can just say welcome here. And this is it. That's it. We can run it. And we can see that because the welcome check is false now, nothing will happen. However, if we choose to change this to true, and this, these ones should not go into quotation marks also, so we we'll change this to true. Now this one, this welcome check will be true and it will go over here in the then. Let's try to run it. Welcome. So that's how this works. We could, um, so now we have the true here. We could also just uh, say, if we want to specify it out, we could say welcome check equals true, like this. This one will be the same, so it's a bit redundant, but that's how we do it here, like this. And of course, we could also write in false down here, but it's uh, instead of the blank, we could write in false, but there's no point in it, and as it is false per default. That's how Boolean work. The last variable type that we will use often, that is data tables. However, we will have a lesson dedicated to data tables, but let me just explain what it is. You can find it here as well, a data table. A data table is nothing more than a data table in their memory. That is, it will look like an Excel sheet with rows and columns, and it will just be in the memory. So it will only be there when the robot runs, and when the robot stops, it will disappear. We will use that a lot with Excel and Excel activities. We will come back to that.